like beadwork from the Phoenix collection. Marcus thought Potlatch Indians carved this. Looks like a movie prop to me. Cheap copy of a Siamese idol. searching for. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. Collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may seem so, Doctor, but I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. My word, India, a small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith. Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car with you. You'll need one. Hmm. What is place? this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What does the spy want with the Buddhist statue? <sighs> I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. 
An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapka. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Today's paper. Hmm, it's unlocked. What do you want, pal? This ain't no ticket office. I'm here to enjoy Madam's outrageous orations. This ain't that kind of show. I think there's a misunderstanding here. Are you calling me stupid? No siree. Lucky for you. Now take a hike. Good night. Same to you. There's got to be some way to talk my way in. Here I go again. You again? Now what? I'm here to watch Madam's egregious exhibition. Like I told you, she don't run that kind of show. Oh, I hear she's practicing sophistry in public. That's a bald lie, and you better apologize for spreading it. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Now take a hike. Wait a minute. What now, buddy? I really need to talk to your star. That's what they all say, Mac. Help me out here, will you? I would, but she'd have my head. Good night. Same to you. Well, that didn't work. I can't reach it. The way looks blocked. It won't go any further that way. Wait! You must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. I want a reading with Miss Hapgood. Are you crazy? During the show? Write her a letter. Hold on! You can't go out there. Think it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is Atlantis. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, Mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. Excuse me. Shh. She's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, 
Perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Like what? Show business is my whole life! Don't you ever read? Sure, it's a hobby of mine. But what if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? goes. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through her. May I present Nurab Sal, the great Atlantean god of... of... Deceit. Deceit. Thanks for me. Indiana Jones, you've got some nerve. Go back, you big jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> Good night, folks. Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. I'd say it's about time. Oh, no! Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. No one here. Nor here either. Dr. Uberman, fantastic news. We found the treasure we seek. That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Ubermann announced his plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So? Practical results are years away. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. Yet you've been concealing important artifacts. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. Huh. You're lucky I don't have you arrested. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. Watch closely. The bead is made of auric calcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. Did you see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? That was Nurab Sal. His spirit is close. Closer than Atlantis, that's for sure. Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. We have no idea where to find your mythical lost city. Shh! I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... what? 
Oh, what a book, yeah. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another fine man. If Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever think of that? Hmm. What were these pieces doing in Iceland, I wonder? Survivors must have sailed there after the great catastrophe. Any port in a storm, huh? Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. Dr. Heimdall. Dr. Indiana Jones, I believe, and Madame Sophia Hatfield. This is my big sight now. Go away. I thought you were digging up Norse graves in Denmark. I was. Obviously, now I'm not. Not feeling very friendly today, are we? I like solitude. It helps me think. Doctor, what do you expect to find here? The secret of Hyperborea. That's what the Greeks called Iceland, you know. You've read how they sailed north to a fog-shrouded land, and how they never set foot upon it? Ha! <laughs> After traveling thousands of miles, mere fog wouldn't turn them back. Some idiots claim they were repelled by ghosts. Puppycock, you know what actually stopped them, John? Maybe they didn't allot any time on their itinerary. No, no, no! They were stopped by a first field, put here by beings not of this earth. That's fascinating, Doctor. Have you ever heard of Plato's Lost Dialogue? Yes, there are rumors about such a book, but I've yet to see it. There are two people you might want to visit. Charles Sternhardt in Tikal, a shady fellow, who claims he translated the whole thing. And Philippe Costa in the Azores Islands. As a researcher, he's a farce, but he's a sharp traitor. What was that about the Lost Dialogue? Dr. Sternhardt and Costa. Well, why did these beings show up here? I am convinced that these travelers came to Earth to form colonies like Atlantis, using Hyperborea as a spaceport. Up north here, we're close to the ether. It's a perfect landing site. So you completely discount the supernatural? Completely. If it's supernatural, you went. Dr. Sternhardt and Costa. So long. Good luck, fellow believer. Let's head for the airport. Critter's too far away. Good old Mother Nature. Wow, some bridge. Hi, Indy. Hello. How did you get over here? While you were off bushwhacking, I found a path. What do we do now? We better find Sternhardt. Stop! I'm begging your pardon. You can't go in there. The temple isn't safe. Can I help you with something? Postcard?
Replicas of the temple? Souvenir mugs? Uh, no thanks, Mr. Charles Bernhard, PhD, independent thinker, researcher, and merchant. Well, what can you tell us about Plato's lost dialogue? I'm the one who translated it, I can tell you that. I'd worry you were here to steal my last copy, but someone called Mr. Smith beat you to it. Oh, no! What can you tell us about Mr. Smith? He showed up last week, a tall man with a German accent and a pistol. He could have taken all my souvenirs, but he only wanted the lost dialogue. What can you tell us about the temple? Glad you asked. The locals claim my an Indian building. Now I ask you, does this look like the work of primitive savages, or does it seem much too civilized? I'm hoping to find some evidence of Atlantis here. Evidence is easy, you're surrounded by it. Poop? Now that's hard. Does that mean we came to the wrong place? I've pretty much lost hope myself, but old legends and rumors die hard. What kind of rumors? Local legend has it that the temple was built by men who are not men. What are men who are not men? Who knows? I've heard everything from giant men with snakes for tails to giant snakes with men for heads. Do you actually believe Atlanteans lived here? After the city sank, this is where they came, I'm sure. Why aren't we allowed inside? How do I know that you aren't a pair of silly tourists? I only show the temple to reputable scholars. I'm Dr. Indiana Jones. Is that scholarly enough? Indiana? Sounds like the name of one of your states. Or, or possibly a cat. Actually, it was the name of a dog. Sophia! I'd really like to explore the temple. Tell me the name of the lost dialogue of Plato. I don't know the title. Title! Well, at least you're an honest man. The Persepolis. Persepolis! Too bad, old bloke. That's not the answer. Echo. Echo. Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker? Title? Hermocrates, a friend of Socrates. Stop. Sorry, old boy. Only accredited researchers are allowed in. Listen. Tell me the name of the lost dialogue of Plato. The Hermocrates. That's it. That's it. Well, now, perhaps I was wrong. You seem to know what you're doing. Walk this way, please. I don't trust this guy, Indy. I know what you mean. Come on. Here we are. Let's see what you can do. Excuse me, Sophia. What's up? Could you talk to Sternhardt and keep him occupied? Okay. Dr. Sternhardt, I'd like to speak to you. This one looks different, more deeply etched. Looks like it could use a nose. Good thing that pest Sternhardt's not around. Excuse me, won't you? Let's see what your friend is up to. The kerosene won't pour out. So, you took my lamp, eh? I hope you know what you're doing. Look, the kerosene ate away the tarnish. Remarkable! Now I got it. Marvelous! It fits perfectly. Now it looks kind of like an elephant. Amazing! Look at that! Astonishing! Bless my soul, the tomb of an Atlantean king! Here's a small stone disc with 
images of land and sea engraved on it, I do believe it's a Wellstone. At last I have the thing. Goodbye, fellow seekers. Wait! Oh no, he got away! Who knows, maybe it is the tomb of an Atlantean king. Too bad for Sternard, he missed the Oracalcum beam. frozen solid, a little too dedicated to his work, I guess. It fits perfectly. Whoa! Look, it melted itself right out of the ice. His house? This is it. Mr. Costa? Pipe down, I'm coming. Be firm, but polite. I suppose you're selling something. If it's not a priceless artifact, I don't want it. I hear you know something about Atlantis. Ha! Wouldn't tell you if I did. Come on, I'm a fellow believer. Is that right? Do you know where Atlantis is? Well, yes, of course I do. Oh, do tell. Somewhere under the ocean? No, no, no. Come closer, boy, and I'll tell you. You're standing on it. Impossible. No one believes me. That hurts. Nice going, Indy. I could have done better. Yeah, sure. Mr. Costa? You again? What do you want? I hear you know something about Plato's lost dialogue. Maybe so, maybe no. Who are you? I'm Indiana Jones. I'm Costa, and I'm tired of talking to you. Indiana? What kind of stupid name is that? Don't say anything. Excuse me. Yes? Here, you talk to the man. My pleasure. Mr. Costa! Pipe down, I'm coming! He's a touchy old bird. Watch and learn, Dr. Jones. Well, hello, beautiful. Professor Costa, my name is Sophia Hapgood. Madam Sophia, the renowned psychic? My friend didn't pester you too much. He's a friend of yours? Well, no, he didn't pester me that much. He just has to learn to be more tactful. You said it. He's ruder than I am. How can I help you? What can you tell us about Plato's Lost Dialogue? What do you want to know? Can you get it for me? Nope. Do you know what's in it? Nope. Have you read it? Not exactly. Do you have it? Sorry. Do you know where we could find it? Well now, that depends. I might trade the information for a rare Atlantean artifact, such as a certain necklace I've heard about. I'll never trade away my necklace. Well then, if that's how you feel, surprise me. Would you do business with my friend here? Madam, I'll do business with anyone. Thanks for your help. Goodbye for now. At your command, madam. Don't be a stranger now. Interesting character. Trade, huh? 
Listen. Yes? I think you better take over. Okay, I'll give it a try. Mr. Costa? You again? What do you want? Let's talk about a trade. Okay, what you got? I'm offering this mysterious eel figurine. Now that looks interesting. You've got a deal, mister. Now listen carefully, I don't know exactly where to find it, but... The Lost Dialogue of Plato is in the Ward Collection, got that? I think so, the Ward Collection. Very good, nice doing business with you. The Ward Collection? You know something, Sophia? I believe Barnett College owns the Ward Collection. Dr. Obama, fantastic news. Corner, at last! See what Herr Jones has kindly provided. What on earth? Isn't it amazing? You fool! You come back to show me this, this, this prehistoric knickknack? Herr Doctor, I believe this knickknack, as you call it, comes from the lost city. Then we have failed! I see no evidence here of some magical metal plate called Ore Calcum! Look here, concealed in the base is a small shiny bead. And it glitters like fire! Exactly as Plato described. It's my guess we found the treasure we I never guess. We must test. I We've done it! The energy of uranium without any radioactivity! And those smug American scientists know nothing! That gives me an idea! All I place the bee inside the statue's open mouth. You saw that? Think of trucks powered by these bees. Think of tanks. Think of airplanes. Use your imagination, Carter. Think big like the Americans. Think of bombs. Why are you dragging me in here? Plato's lost dialogue should be here somewhere. Need some help? No thanks, you just get in the way. Fine. I'll meet you in your office. Looks like someone's ashes in here. Feels like there's something loose in here. A key? There's a manuscript inside. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. I found Plato's lost dialogue. Really? Our jungle friend Sternhardt is quite the scholar. Let me see.
see how this will help us find Atlantis. Isn't it obvious? No, it's much too vague. Our only hope is supernatural inspiration. You mean your old pal, Nurab Sal? If I can make contact, yes. Where's my spirit guide when I need him? Come on, Sophia. The answer's in the book, not outer space. So he got his dates mixed up. Why is that so important? Plato's error means distances could also be wrong. So what if they are? If Plato is right, Atlantis is in the Mediterranean. You mean 300 miles from Greece instead of 3,000? Yes, the cradle of civilization. You could be right. He once told me he came from the middle of the world. That's what Mediterranean means. Good old Nurab Sal. I'm starting to like him. Wait, quiet. I think I'm getting something. Don't push this too far, Sophia. Will you just shut up and listen to me? Among the artifacts that Kerner stole was a small stone disc with a hole in it. I'm sure it was one of the three stones mentioned in Plato's book. And I didn't find it. I bought it from Omar al-Jabbar in Algiers. Why should he help us? Or was it Alain Cartier in Monte Carlo? Either way, Algiers or Monte Carlo. This much I do know. You'll need all three stones if you want to find Atlantis. All right, I'm ready to go. Not so fast. First, I'm going to tell your fortune. Look into my eyes. Deep into my eyes. For Pete's sake, I'm not going to hurt you. Now hold still. You are a remarkable man, Dr. Jones. You possess great strength of character. You are resourceful. Always eager to solve life's deepest puzzles. I could never follow the thoughts of your maze-like mind. So I can't follow you along the twisting path that leads to Atlantis. I'd rather tackle this together with you. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. We should team up. Okay, if that's how you feel, we'll go together. Don't get any funny ideas. I'll be running the show. You make it sound so romantic. Excuse me. Yes? Do you know where to find Omar al-Jabbar? He has a shop nearby, behind the marketplace. Nice knives. Yes, they were a gift from my father, the greatest knife grower in North Africa. I'm trying to follow his example. But alas, no one will volunteer to be my assistant since the accident. Sorry to bother you. No bother. I just wish a volunteer would step forward to assist me. Listen. What? Ah, Algeria. Hmm. I think you should volunteer to help the knife thrower. No, you don't, Jones. Please, it's perfectly safe. Right, perfectly safe. Take a good look at his dexterity. Well, okay. I better not get too close. Oof. Look here, ladies and gentlemen. A volunteer. But... Now, now, my dear. There's nothing to be afraid of. But... Just walk over to the board now. <laughs> Thank you for your brave assistance, my dear. Allow me to express my gratitude by giving you this souvenir knife. Here, take this knife before I use it on you.
Excuse me. What can I do for you, Apendi? Are you Mr. Omar Al-Jabbar? I am but a humble shopkeeper. My name is unimportant. Nice shop. I like to think so. Excuse me again. Yes? How much for the mask? You can take the worthless thing. It's getting away my best customers. Well, here we are. Well, what does Trottier look like? How should I know? I've never actually met him. We did all our business by mail. What makes you think we'll find Trottier here? All his letters mention how much he likes strolling under the bright lights. Suppose Trottier shows up. What then? Bring him up to my room. Okay, I'll try to find him. Good. He used to have one of the three stones. If we can coax him into a seance, he might let us have it. Okay, if you say so. See you in the hotel. Just a moment, please. Are you Alan Trottier? Oh, perhaps. Who's asking? I'm Dr. Indiana Jones of Barnett College. Jones, Jones, Jones. I believe I've heard of you. Yes, of course, the famous archaeologist. That's me. And I am Trottier. Amateur scholar, part-time poet, professional dreamer. My horoscope told me to find a new path through life tonight. And here I bump into you. Ah, what good fortune. Madam Sophia's in town and wants to meet you. Really? The great psychic? Oh, no wonder I felt restless tonight. Still, one must be cautious. I fear that German agents are on my trail. To prove you are not one of them, answer me this. When were the many freaks of nature created? When the celestial spirits were well aligned. Yes, excellent. Obviously, you know Plato's lost dialogue well. How can I help you? Follow me and Madame Sophia will read your fortune. Oh, this is a big step. I'm not sure. Come on, take a chance. She's right here in the hotel. Well, I need money. Perhaps Madame can tell me which phase of the moon is best for gambling. So, I'll do it. Please, lead the way. Have a seat, Monsieur Trottier. Is he here? Keep him busy. I'm going to try something. All right, then. Give me a minute while I set him up. Ah, oh, Monsieur Trottier, I am so pleased to meet such an expert antiquarian at long last. Madame flatters me. It is I who am pleased to meet you. Now then, I need a token of power to set the mood. Well, I have the stone key. I truly believe it is from the lost city. Very good. Very good indeed. Now we can begin. Now is not the time. I better wait until it's dark. The lights, what happened to the lights? Uh, I think Narab Sal is trying to signal us. Oh, I feel the presence of Narab Sal approaching us. Done, Indy. Looks like we have one of the three stones. Let's hope we can find a way to use it. I'll bet Trottier got it from Al Jabbar. Those two do a lot of business together. Let's head for North Africa and find out if I'm right. 
Fine, I'll hail a cab while you get changed. Wait for me! Excuse me again. Yes? Do you ever deal in antiquities from Atlantis? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Many a fool dreams of the lost kingdom. How may I know your intentions are serious? I've got this stone. Stone, you say? Let's see it. Here it is. Take a look. Ah. It is said that three stone discs were needed to open the gates of Atlantis. This looks like one of them. A sunstone, if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Jones. How do you know who I am? Yeah, how? My dear Miss Hapgood, when you're Omar Al-Jabbar, you know these things. Then you are Al-Jabbar. Yes, a lowly dealer in oddities and trinkets at your service. Let's get out of business, shall we? What do you know about Atlantis? Yes, tell us. Well, somewhere deep in the Atlas Mountains, there's an archaeological dig site. I'm convinced it contains the remains of an Atlantean outpost. Whose dig is it? Europeans. Germans, I believe. What makes you so sure it's Atlantean? From time to time, scoundrels appear in my shop to trade pieces they stole there. The designs are unmistakable. Where is it exactly? I'm not exactly sure. I've learned enough to make a rough map, but it's very rough. The problem is, the desert is no place for a civilized man like myself. We'll go. We will? I admire your courage, but you'll never survive the desert. Give up while you still have your lives ahead of you. We'll never give up. Well then, let it be as God wills it. Come, I'll lend you my map. And a couple of sturdy camels. Returned alive. Tell me, how was your trip? Okay, except our camels died a mile out of town. A terrible shame. Those were my last two camels. Perhaps I can make amends in some small way. Do you still have that mask I gave you? Yeah, I've got it right here. Why do you ask? I'd like to trade you for it. What will you give me? That depends. Do you have anything in mind? Make an offer. Well, how about... This baseball? It's been autographed by your country's Lou Gehrig. No thanks. Can I see something else? How about... This voodoo doll? It was carved from trees in the Black Forest. No thanks. Can I see something else? How about... This little red wagon? It once belonged to Rudyard Kipling. No thanks. Can I see something else? How about... This yellow yo-yo? It was hand-painted by an Arabian princess. I'll take it. You've made a good exchange, Effendi. Excuse me. Yes? What looks good today? Today we have a special, squab on a stick, only 20 dinars. Do you accept U.S. currency? Sorry, no. A uh, squab would sure hit the spot. 20 dinars, if any. Maybe we can make a deal. What kind of deal? Will you give me a squab for this brand new yo-yo? 
Mm-hmm. Sorry, Fendi, I never accept gifts for myself. And certainly not in this color. I've got another offer. Make it. I'll trade this beautiful knife for a squab. I already have several of those knives. The knife thrower has notoriously bad aim. Pull the squab. I'll be back later. Certainly, Effendi. Can I trade my yo-yo for something else? Do you have anything in mind? Make an offer. Well, how about... This beautiful white cane? It was once touched by Queen Victoria. I don't think that's it. What else can you show me? How about... These charming shaded spectacles? With these, a man can stare straight at the sun. I'll take them. You've made a good exchange, Effendi. Excuse me. Yes? I'd like to make another squab offer. I'm listening. Squab for these spectacles, even Stephen. Mm hmm. I'm afraid I cannot make that trade, Effendi. But it does remind me to get a gift for my aging grandfather. Hold the squad. I'll be back later. Certainly, Effendi. Excuse me again. Can I trade my spectacles for something else? Do you have anything in mind? Something nice for an older gentleman? Anything else? Make an offer. Well, how about... This handsome red face? No gentleman should be seen without one. I'll take it. You've made a good exchange, Effendi. Excuse me. Yes? I'd like to make another squab offer. Trade me one squab for one chic new fez. Mm hmm. My grandfather will love this gift. And it's so color coordinated. Here, have a squab. Thank you. Hello there. Ah, a prosperous American. What are you doing here on the streets? I'm a beggar, Effendi. It is my job to be here. Today I'm offering a discount. Give me food and I'll give you a free gift. Now, let me get back to work, please. Excuse me? You bring food? Here. Thank you, Effendi. Here's your free gift. Hello there. If you have ticket, you see signs. If not, you don't. Will this do? A valuable all-day pass. Today the skies are yours, Effendi. We're free! Aren't you coming? I'll stay here and watch the balloon. Hmm, the only mark on this map is one big X. Hello there. Salam, Appendi. What do you make of this map? Hmm, this X is to the south. That's about it. Thanks for the information.
Stay here and guard the balloon. Hello there. Salam, Appendi. Have you seen anyone digging around here? Well, I have seen foreigners with trucks and equipment. Trucks? Equipment? Where? It's hard to remember. The desert all looks the same, you know? What do you make of this map? Hmm... You are very close to the site. This X is... slightly to the north. And... a little to the west. Thanks for the information. Him too. Look what we found, an abandoned dig site. Wait, where are you going? I sense the presence of Nurab Sal. I should have guessed. Indy! Hold on, Sophia. Sophia! Uh-oh. I better not get too near that hole. I might fall in too. It's already open. I don't think that'll work. That's enough. The jar is full. That'll do any good. Well, that doesn't seem to work. Now it's open. I've emptied the jar into the pipe. I can't move it. It's a painting of a chest or ark. I've seen that before. crumbling rock. Sophia? I thought you were going to leave me in there. Believe me, I was tempted. Lucky you didn't. Here's something we may need. The distributor cap. It fell on my head when I sank into the hole. And that's not all. Look! What is it? It's an amber fish on a string. I can see that. What does it do? How should I know? I suppose you've come up with something more interesting. Maybe. Look where the sunstone is centered on the mural. The island of Crete. I'll bet Crete is where we'll find the greater colony of Atlantis, Plato mentioned. Sounds possible. Let's go! Don't forget the sunstone, Indy. Oh, right. Got it. There's a plug missing. What do you know? A perfect fit. It fits! I don't think that'll work. 
Let's book passage to Crete, Sophia. It's a pile of rubble. It's a surveyor's transit, useful for measuring angles and laying out straight lines. They're all empty. Nothing in there except dust. All they're holding now is air. It's an ancient diagram of some kind. There's a bull's head, horns, and tail. The lines appear to converge on that circle. Could the circle be one of the stone disks? They look like the town centerpiece. It's a pile of rubble. Hmm, the stones look loose. There's a statue here. The transit is set up and ready for surveying. I see a door. I see the right horn. I see the left horn. What's this? Hey, there's a stone disc down here. It's got a hole in the middle and little moons carved into the surface. It must be one of the moonstones Plato wrote about. It's just about the same size as the stone disks. It's an empty clay jar. Well, that didn't do anything. That still didn't do anything. stones with each other and the tall horns, satisfying all of Plato's conditions at the same time. What do you know? A secret door. A 
better not forget the stones. So, the legend of a labyrinth hidden under the ruins of Gnosis is true. The legend of Atlantis isn't any more far-fetched. Maybe it's true, too. I think the last stone disc and Atlantis are waiting for us somewhere beyond that door. Stay away from the door. I can't reach it. Get behind me, Sophia. Sophia, get over here. What's going on, Indy? It must be a primitive elevator of some sort. I always thought Mr. Otis invented the elevator. Yeah, well, this is our floor. But wait, that was our ride! It says... I am convinced the map room lies beyond the next chamber. Alas, I cannot get past the gate. I need that autocalcum detector. Too bad. He came a long way. It's his note. Let him keep it. How nice. Wait, there's a chain running up behind the waterfall. It must be holding the elevator's counterweight. This is the world stone that Sternhart swiped in Tikal. Hold on, Jones. Where do you think you're going? I'm climbing this chain. You'd better come back. Trust me. <clears throat> ah, ouch. I hate getting wet. Here I go again. And there it goes again. Wait here. <clears throat> ah, ouch. Brr, that water's cold. There, the counterweight is free. Two more beads underneath it. I'll take them too. Sophia? Yes? And what do we do now? I think we need to open this gate. It doesn't seem to open. 
It's a narrow crawl space. Sophia? Yes? Let me boost you through that hole. I'm not climbing through there. I'll bet it's full of spiders, or rats, or snakes. You probably wouldn't fit anyway. Was that a crack about my weight? I just meant it's an awfully narrow passage. Are you saying I won't fit? It's not exactly a barn door, you know. Oh, you are so insulting. Excuse me? Huh. I'm sorry I was rude. You're just trying to get on my good side, but I forgive you anyway. Come on, climb onto my shoulders. I'd rather not. With luck, you might just squeeze through. Oh, really? Shut up and give me a boost, Jones. Yes, ma'am. And watch those hands, Buster. There's a pulley on this side. We'll use it. Okay, hang on. Happy? We're not out of the woods yet, but nice going. The oracalcum is now in the box. It isn't open. Why, it's pointing at me. It's pointing at Sophia's necklace. It must be detecting the oracalcum residue. Listen. Yes? Can I borrow that necklace of yours for a while? Why? I think it's throwing off the oracalcum detector. So? So, I want to put Nurav Sal in a box. Ha! Boxes will not hold him. Your necklace is confusing the detector. So? So, give me the necklace. Not a chance. Forget it. Listen, so we need to hide it. You think so? Then say, Nurab Sal is a mighty king and his eyes see through. Nurab Sal is a mighty king and his eyes see through. All right. I can't give you my necklace. But tell me your plan and I'll try to help. I want to put it in this gold box. Okay. Give me the box and I'll put it inside. There, but just for a few minutes. Thanks. It's not pointing anywhere. There must not be any oracalcum nearby. It's not pointing anywhere. pointing toward that blank wall in the back. Look! Look, an oracalcum bead. This must have been the bead that attracted the oracalcum detector. Great. Now take the gold box. I want to wear my necklace again. Move! Well... Either Atlantis is a lot smaller than we thought, or we've found some kind of map or scale model. Laid out just as Plato described it, in three concentric circles. That didn't do anything. Better not lose the stones. Sophia! Where are you? We've got her, you foolish Americana! Kerner, which rock did you crawl out from under? I have no time to trade insults. 
hand over the stones or you'll never see Miss Hapwood again. Okay, take the stones. Just don't hurt Sophia. She'll be perfectly safe in my custody. <laughs> Kerner! What a slimy toad. Uh-oh. Kerner wedged it shut from the other side. You know, I think one of the rocks is starting to move. Well, I hope you must board the U-boat. I'm not going anywhere. What have you done with Indy, you creep? Forget about Jones. How can you expect a man to lead you through Atlantis when he can't even find a way out of the labyrinth? And you're practically an Atlantis tour guide, I suppose? We have charted an underwater entrance to the lost city. Together, we will discover its secrets. Good luck. You have a choice, Fraulein. Join us and fulfill your life's ambition. Or join your friend, another rotting corpse on the road to glory. Well, how can I refuse hospitality like that? Chance was a better man than I thought. He would tolerate her. There's a Nazi U-boat. Halt! Uh-oh. I'm the captain here, and I don't tolerate stowaways. Are you a sub-captain or merely sub-human? Defend yourself, American Schrein! Looks like I'm captain now. Whoa, we're getting underway. Let's hope we're headed for Atlantis. That won't work. Wonderful, it snapped right off. Uh, your captain commands all hands to the bow. The closet door is in the way. Try to relax, Herr Doctor. Relax? We are approaching the civilization that played with the forces of nature so they will play with toys! Whoa, the acid's eating right through the metal. Here are the stone discs. There's a small key in here, too. I'll take a couple of slices. Don't mind if I do. It's labeled Ausgeschnitzel. Okay, the mug is full of acid. Sophia? Indy? Jones can't save you now, madam. Uh, wait! I'm getting a message! 
A message from Nurab Sal. Nurab what? An old friend from Atlantis. His spirit is calling me. Tell Nurab Sal that I've got a plan. Nurab Sal is listening. Just distract the guard for a while, okay? Nurab Sal understands all. Wait. What? Oh, darn. I've lost contact. Too bad. Sophia. Wait. What now? I'm getting another message from Nurab Sal. Let's try another plan. Nurab Sal is listening. Just distract the guard for a while, okay? Nurab Sal understands all. Oops. Lost contact again. Wait. What now? I'm getting another message from Nurab Sal. I want to just sick Nurab Sal on the guard. Nurab Sal is not amused by the jokes of fools. Excuse me, Mr. Guard Person. I don't want to interrupt Sophia while she's distracting the guard. Who knows? It might come in handy. Who are you? Talk fast and I better like your tone of voice or you're a dead man. Did Madame foretell that your future looks pale? No, now that you mention it. Indeed! Nice work. Now it's unlocked. But what do we do now? Kerner claims there's an underwater entrance to Atlantis near here. Let's find it. I'm going to look around. Okay. Aren't you coming? I'll just stay here and make sure Sleeping Beauty doesn't wake up. The rudder's locked. Amazing! We're hundreds of feet below sea level, yet there's enough air pressure to keep the water out. How's it possible? Welcome to Atlantis, Indy. Get your hands off me, Jones. Jones? Hey, you're not Jones! Help, Indy! Sophia? The ladder is in place. Sophia, where are you? Kerner must have grabbed her somehow. It's a statue. The mouth of the statue opened. Now, this might be useful. Hmm. 
It worked. I hope this catches crabs. Indiana Jones. Looks like your adventure is over. Don't be too sure. Let's see how big a goon you really are. Enough talk! <laughs> you know when to quit. Let's talk this over, with our fists. He doesn't have anything worth taking. see about that. I floored you before, I can floor you again. Enough talk! He doesn't have anything worth taking. That looks much better. Calcum beads. Uh oh, that didn't work very well. Hey, it's getting hot.
Sophia, are you all right? I'll feel a lot better once you open this cell. Did you miss me? Put it this way, even your company beats this cell. Sit tight. Don't leave me here, Indy. Jones! Don't you dare leave me here, you... you troglodyte! It looks pretty hungry. I can't board it from here. Whoa, this thing's got a motor. It's closed. It's closed. It's a stone disk with earthly images carved into it. It seems to be a simple storage nook. What's this? It's a broken statue. can't reach it. I don't think that'll work. I better get down from here first. I can't pick that up. Sophia? What? Well? Sit tight. Don't leave me here, Indy. I can't do this by myself. What am I supposed to do with this? Maybe we'll think of something. Are you sure this is safe? I've got a plan. Which is? Brace the cage with a hinge pin. You know, that just might work. There! You know, I had a slug you. 
Come on, Sophia, don't be angry. Angry? You left me rotting in this hellhole! Well, if that's how you feel, maybe you should stay here. Maybe I will. Great idea. Fine. Fine. What was that? I'm not sure. I think Nurab Sol made me do it. Is that so? Dangerous fellow that, Mr. Sal. Yeah. Well, we better be going. I can't. It's wedged in too tight. Indy, Nurab Sal is here. I sense his presence. Hold on a minute. Where exactly is he? Right around the corner. I'm sure of it. Show me. All right. Prepare yourself and follow me. Oh, for crying out loud. In here, Indy. Follow me. Excuse me. Speak, mortal! Come on, Sophia, let's get out of here. Never! I'm staying right here with the spirit who guides my thoughts. Sophia, is that you? The woman that was is now the king that shall ever be. Address me accordingly, please. Sorry, your highness. Brave or mercy, swine! Why are you acting like this? Speak your mind, Carl. You sound like you're possessed. Possessed? <laughs> By what? By Nurab Sal. Well, you're wrong. We're just friends. Excuse me. Speak, mortal! What's making you so weird? What do you mean, Carl? Let me talk to the mortal woman. Make it quick. The time for human frailty is past. I think your necklace is driving you nuts. That's absurd. For the first time in my life, my mind is perfectly clear. Come on, Sophia. Hand over the necklace. I can't. In ten years, I've never let it out of my grasp. Now, I can't even force myself to take it off. Oh, Indy, I'm doomed. Sophia, pull yourself together, will you? How can I help you? I can't help myself, that's for sure. My willpower is gone, replaced by the thing I found and thought I owned. It's all up to you, Indy. What can I do? The one who feeds on fire is always hungry. Desperate moments require desperate measures. Mind if I look at your necklace? That medallion is hot! Drop it, why don't you? Nurab Sal won't let me! No! Sorry, Sophia. So long, Nurab Sal. Dead as that monster.
Look at those feet, or whatever they were. Atlantean graffiti. More Atlantean graffiti. Going up? I'll wait down here. Suit yourself. It's working. Get on board, Sophia. That was close. Too close. Stick close, kid. This could be dangerous. I'll take my chances. is too steep. Nice moves. Thanks. Here's your shining city. Not what I expected, that's for sure. And the place is still humming, maintaining the air pressure for untold centuries.
That didn't do anything. Uh-oh. What did you do now, Ruby? I think I turned it on. You see, Colonel? I told you, John, would be of some use to us. Kerner, I knew I smelled a rat. All I smell, Herr Charles, is your pig. Don't move. My God, how beautiful! Congratulations, Dr. Jones. You've just handed to Sir Mike its ultimate victory. It'll take more than a few orichalcum bombs to conquer the world, over me. Bombs? The gods don't need bombs. Take a look around. What do you think this astonishing machinery was used for? Well, that's a mystery we'll never unravel. Wrong! As Plato himself well knew, this was a factory for manufacturing higher beings! While you've been wandering around, we've been stockpiling for a calco. But now we have all we need! Are you ready for the greatest moment in history, Doctor? I think the heat in here is cooked in your cabbages. Scientific discoveries belong to the moon, John. That's something you of all people should understand. Didn't you notice how the skulls here have horns? Experiments gone awry. Unworthy slaves sacrificed in the name of knowledge. Progress has its price, you know. Maybe they weren't quite human to begin with. Inhuman or subhuman. They were destroyed by their physical imperfections when they bathed in the awesome power of this device. Fortunately, we suffer from no such imperfection. You really believe in this godhood business? Why not? As a god, I shall know everything, be everywhere, rule everyone. We both shall rule here, Doctor. Eh? Don't be silly, Colonel. You're not prepared for this. We shall see. Swell. Send me a postcard from Valhalla. One more step and you'll get there first. You can't leave now. We're just beginning our experiment. Don't let me stop you. And we can't begin without a guinea pig, can we? Now, if you'll kindly step onto the platform. No! What? If anyone's going to become a god, it must be me. You? Don't make me laugh. I am in charge of this operation, you spineless sausage. Activate the machine. A test is a test. Plato suggested can be. Let's try that. Wait. What now, Charles? What about Plato's tenfold error? What about it? Most of Plato's numbers were way off target. Hmm. Just a thought. You may be right. We should divide by ten. Try one B. Himmel, it's working! <laughs> a small bee for a small man, eh, Charles? Now it's your turn! I'd rather watch. Thanks for the honor. No, unless you want my men to move you. That's better. What makes you think you can outdo the old kings? Science, my boy. We have it and say it. Here goes. Hang on a second. Please, Professor, don't make me do this. Look on the right side. You'll be leaving your tails behind. You know, you'd make a much better god than me. That goes without saying, but there's no reason to turn up your nose at the chance to become one of the lesser immortals. 
Please, Professor, I've got classes to teach. Stop whining, man. Let's not take chances. How does 20 beads sound? No beads, you crazy old man. Come now, Doctor. Where's your scientific curiosity? Listen, what if Plato's error went the other way? How do you mean? I think Plato and Kerner were both wrong. All right, Chorn. You decide. How many beads should be used? No beads. Forget your stupid obsession. Really, Dr. Chorn? Get a grip on yourself. For your sake, I hope this doesn't work. Why not? Once I'm a god, I'm sending you straight to hell. I'm offering you immortality. Is that the thanks I get? Have you heard the term angry god? Wait till you see me. Hang on. Perhaps I haven't thought this through. You want to go fast. You're scheming against me in spite of my generosity. Well, you won't get the upper hand that way. Stand aside, Jones. My discoveries seem like tall tales, even to me. At least there's some evidence this time. Then again, maybe not. What was that for? To ease the pain.